fatality. Oh, dang, that was so brutal. I wonder what the most brutal fatality in all Mortal Kombat there is. Actually, I wonder what else I don't know about Mortal Kombat. That'd be a good list one day. Good list. What's up, Rad Family? I have been obsessed with MKX all week. Since its release, I've been playing it every single day. I thought today would be the perfect opportunity to talk more about Mortal Kombat. So here are 29 super ratastic facts about Mortal Kombat. So let's get to it. Ermac wasn't originally planned. His being is all thanks to a rare glitch in the early installments of the series. To cut production costs and memory usage, Developers used one actor to model several ninjas after. They placed red fabric on their suits as a guideline to later switch to another color using the computer. However, during long periods of gameplay, a glitch would cause the player's ninja to revert back to wearing the red suit, and a message would display Ermac for Aero Macro. While the rumor was more popular for male characters, there is also a female version of this glitch. The female glitch went on to be made into a real character called Scarlet in 2011. The most famous the famous lawsuit against the Mortal Kombat series comes from the 2006 installment Mortal Kombat Armageddon, and it was filed by attorney Jack Thompson. In the suit, Thompson claimed that developers used his likeness without permission after seeing an online image that he thought resembled himself. What Thompson didn't realize is that this game has a Create a Fighter feature that allows the player to customize their own fighter. Turns out, the character was created and uploaded online by a young gamer, so the lawsuit was quickly thrown out. Mortal Kombat's intense violence led to the creation of the ESRB rating system. When the game was first released, its violence set it apart from any other game at the time. But with its gory success came controversy. Parents were worried that the game would send the wrong message to their children, and the debate if there should be a regulation system in place arose. In 1994, the Entertainment Software Rating Board was established. The very first Mortal Kombat was created by a team of only four people. One programmer, Ed Boon, two graphics guys, John Vogel, and John Tobias, and one sound guy, Dan Forden. In early test footage of MK3, Cyrex and Sector were originally called Mustard and Ketchup, but seeing as those names were a bit too cutesy in comparison to the rest of the roster, they were changed to what we know them as today. Mortal Kombat Deception is filled with Easter eggs. As Shujinko makes his way across the Chaos Realm and the Nether Realm, some of the inhabitants seem to be speaking in an unusual garbled language. The audio is actually normal, but it sounds like gibberish because it's played backwards. Once players caught on, they deciphered the following. Drink milk, get plenty of sleep, listen to your parents, and do your homework. And the famous, if you have decoded this, you have too much time on your hands. Sub-Zero is the only character to be in every single game of the series. Not even Ed Boon's favorite character, Scorpion, can say that because he wasn't in Mortal Kombat 3. Noob Saibot in Mortal Kombat 3 is a blackened Kano sprite. This explains why Noob's moveset consists entirely of Kano combos and strikes, though this was changed in the release of the Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Mortal Kombat 1 was originally supposed to be a video game adaption of the 1992 film Universal Soldier starring Jean-Claude Van Damme. The adaption deal fell through because Van Damme's schedule was reportedly too busy for him to star in the game himself. The production team had already gotten quite far into the game's development and decided to go on with the project anyway. A reference to this can be found in Johnny Cage's first appearance in Mortal Kombat, which bears a striking resemblance to Jean-Claude Van Damme's appearance in the 1988 film Bloodsport. In the very early stages of development, Sub-Zero's name was originally Tundra, which was later used as the young Sub-Zero's codename in the 2011 Mortal Kombat. Shang Tsung originally had a fatality that allowed him to cut off his opponent's head with his sword. The sprites for this can still be found in the game's data. Raiden and Shang Tsung were both inspired by the 1986 film Big Trouble in Little China. Raiden was modeled by the movie's assassin trio, The Three Storms, and Shang Tsung resembles the movie's evil sorcerer, Lo Pan. It took six months, over half of the game's entire development, to come up with the game's title. Some of the names that were suggested were Kumite, Dragon Attack, Deathblow, and Fatality. Steve Ritchie, a friend of Dan Boone and a fellow game designer, came up with the famous title 
after noticing combat was misspelled on Boone's drawing board. Earlier drafts of the Mortal Kombat hero designed Liu Kang as a Japanese warrior, called Miniomato Yashitsun, but the crew couldn't stand the long, complicated, hard to pronounce name and shortened it to what we know it as today. Mortal Kombat's release was one of the largest video game launches of its time. A year after taking its original form as an arcade game, Mortal Kombat was released on four home systems, Nintendo Super NES and Game Boy, and Sega Enterprises, Sega Genesis, and Game Gear. All four versions were released on Mortal Monday, which was on September 13th, 1993. But not all versions were the same. The Nintendo variations omitted the presence of blood entirely, replacing it with sweat, and it cut down the violence substantially. While the Sega variations allowed for access to these gorier features, but only through a cheat code. The cheat code needed to allow the blood and gore in the Sega Genesis version of the game was ABACABB. This combination of letters is in reference to Abacab, the 1981 album by Phil Collins' band Genesis, and the 1995 Mortal Kombat movie, Brandon Lee's son of Bruce Lee was chosen to play the character Johnny Cage. He was set to start filming immediately after finishing filming The Crow, but in a tragic accident, Lee was accidentally shot shot and killed Wall on set eight days before the movie was set to wrap. In 1993's Mortal Kombat 2, if two players played a consecutive 250 matches against one another in a single session, they would unlock a secret game of Pong that would show up between the first and second round. Mortal Kombat was the very first game ever to implement something called a juggling concept. This refers to the fact that when a player is thrown into the air, they cannot defend themselves, and they are vulnerable to more damage. It is also the first one-on-one -on -one fighting game to use digitalized sprites as characters, meaning it used graphics obtained by digitalized footage of real-life actors instead of hand-drawn animations. Goro is the only character not modeled after a real-life actor. Instead, they used a clay sculpture in stop motion to create him. Mortal Kombat has the longest-running voice actor in a video game series in history. This honor goes to Mortal Kombat creator Ed Boon, who has voiced Scorpion throughout the entire series. Not too surprising considering Scorpion is Ed Boon's favorite character. To this very day, the 1995 Mortal Kombat movie is still the highest grossing feature film based off of a video game. There has been one cartoon series, one live action TV series, and one live action web series based on the franchise. The cartoon series aired in 1996 for a total of 13 episodes and was called Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm. The TV series aired 22 episodes in 1998 and was called Mortal Kombat Conquest. The web series debuted on Machinima's YouTube channel in 2011 and ran for 19 episodes. If you haven't already seen the web series, I'll make sure to put a link down in my description box. The Mortal Kombat franchise consists of a total of 20 games and 3 collections. MKX introduces the series very first gay character named Kung Jin. Though his sexuality is not a focal point in the storyline, it is alluded to twice. The first time Raiden briefly tells Kung Jin. Self-loathing has always been an unfortunate part of your makeup. The second time comes later when Kung Jin says that he cannot join the Shaolin monks because they will not accept him. Raiden responds they care about only what is in his heart not whom his heart desires. Adding even more support to this theory, MKX cinematic director Dominic Ciancillo tweeted praise to fans for picking up the subtle expositions contained in Kun Jin's flashbacks. Thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. I hope I was able to share some awesome Mortal Kombat facts with you. And if I was able to share some new facts that you didn't already know, which I totally hope I was able to, please share this video with a friend. You can share it on any and all social media sites, including Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr and Foursquare and all the other ones out there that I'm not including, but you get the gist. If you guys could share this video with a friend, that would mean the universe to me and I'd be so super duper grateful that you would take the time to do that. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And if you're not yet part of our fantastic community, well, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and join today. Until next time, bye.